Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater, and today we're going to talk about the differences between analog and digital delays. So I've already made some videos using both analog delays and digital delays. Uh, I've also made a video using synths with both types of delays. And I also have a video of my pedal board, which features both analog and digital delays. But this video is specifically going to help answer the question, which one is right for me or do I need both? And so to start out, we're going to have to talk about the difference between analog and digital. And this is very oversimplified. But digital is when you take something and store the motion as steps of digital values, and then you play those values back. Uh, analog is when you have values that are continuously flowing. There is no stepping. There's, there's whatever value between min and max you want, there's always some value in between that. But delays are kind of funny because even analog delay pedals use sampling. And, and I know you're saying sampling isn't that for digital, and it's kind of not. So let me explain. Uh, in the analog pedals, they use what's called bucket brigade chips. It's basically uh, an IC chip that has thousands of little capacitors, basically buckets that can hold varying amounts of voltage. And they're analog in that there are no steps of what those voltage can be. It can be anything from min to max and anything in between. But they're still sampling. And why? Because what it does is as each bucket comes along, it measures the voltage in your current wave and it stores that voltage in that bucket and then it moves that bucket along. And that's where we're getting the delay because there's a master clock that's moving these buckets along and each one of them is getting filled up with an analog amount of voltage. But there is sampling, and so uh, there are some sampling things that come into play where we normally only talk about sampling with digital. Now, like I said, on a digital pedal, we're taking that analog signal and immediately running it into an analog to digital converter, turning it into a bunch of ones and zeros, and then we're simply holding those ones and zeros for a specific amount of time, and then playing those ones and zeros back out. And each have their own advantages, each have their own uh, disadvantages, uh, but the main thing is that analog pedals seem to be constantly trying to do more of what the digital stuff can do by adding digital components and hybrid. And the digital delays are constantly trying to do better and better analog simulations, either by modeling all of the components in an analog delay or simply by manipulating the sound to sound like what happens when it goes through an analog delay. So I chose these four pedals as good examples of two analog and two digital. They're both fully analog and fully digital. Neither of these are hybrids. And the first two analogs is the MXR Carbon Copy Analog Delay and the Boss Wazacraft Delay DM2W. And then on the digital end, I've got the Boss Digital Delay DD8 and the Source Audio Nemesis Delay. And so uh, for sound, um, you know, it really doesn't matter if we're using guitar or horns or vocals or synths. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to use synths, but um, you can imagine what these sounds will do to all the other types of instruments. So I'm starting with everything bypassed. Here's my sound, and I'm using the Keystep Pro controller and sequencer uh, to drive the Moog Mother 32. It's a single oscillator, uh, and I kind of have it set to a short blip so that you can hear what happens to the delays. Here it is bypassed. And now I'll turn on the first pedal. This is the carbon copy. And so you're hearing the top end drop away very, very quickly. This is because, as I mentioned, analog pedals sample. 
And the sampling rate, how fast you can sample, is determined by how many buckets they have and how long you want the delay to go. The longer you want the delay to go, uh, the slower you're going to have to do those buckets. The slower you do the buckets, the lower the high frequency can be. So uh, you're definitely losing a lot of top end. But musicians like that sound because by having a dark echo behind you, um, it doesn't get confused with the actual melody that you're playing or the sound that you're playing. So guitarists in particular like that analog sound because they can play a solo and it doesn't sound like two guitars playing the exact same thing slightly delayed. It really does sound like a background ambient sort of thing. So that's the carbon copy. I'll do it one more time. And notice that as I go higher and higher, um, none of it's getting repeated. There, right? It can't even hear that frequency. Uh, and now I'll do some really low frequencies. And you hear that characteristic closing of the tone. And at the same time, it's losing some bottom end as well. And that's characteristic of that delay. So now I'm going to go to the next one. This is the Wazacraft delay. Now this one, uh, in particular, the Wazacraft has a switch to go from the original uh, delay to a slightly more modernized version, still analog. Uh, but this is the older version, just for comparison's sake. And we'll go back to the carbon copy. And I'm trying to make these close, but you know, I could tweak all day trying to get them closer and closer. The, the point is, you're looking for the one that has the quality in the delay uh, and the repeats that you like. So now here's the Boss DD8 doing its best to imitate the analog behavior of the other two pedals. And again, you're hearing that high end close up with each repeat, but it's a little bit brighter, a little bit more clear than the analog versions. Uh, let me turn the feedback up just a little bit more. But it is definitely closing up like the other delays. Now here's the Nemesis, currently in mono, um, and I'm doing that by pulling one of the jacks out, and it's set to an analog setting. And I have a knob for darkening the sound. That might be a little bit too dark. I'm gonna open it up a little bit. There. So now one time around with each of them. Each of them are slightly different. And again, that's the kind of thing you want to experiment with or just listen to a lot of YouTube videos. So now let's talk about some of the advantages of analog. So first of all, we talked about because of the bucket brigade, you're definitely getting a different kind of sound coming back in the echoes than what you played in. Um, it tends to be a little more, I don't know, puffy, it's, it blooms. Uh, and that's kind of the nature of the Bucket Brigade chip. Um, it certainly is darker and it just sounds a little more grungy every time the repeat happens. All right, so now I'm gonna do each of them with longer regeneration or feedback time just to show how the signal degrades over time. All right, so now I'm gonna put the Wazacraft delay into its more modern setting, uh, which will definitely give you back some more of the top end uh, and less degradation of the signal. You can hear how the top end is staying. I'm gonna turn the regeneration up even more. But eventually it's still closing.
So now I'm going to talk about the next really great feature of analog delays, and that is once you have a long regeneration time, if you change the delay time, you're going to be changing the pitch in real time. And it's going to do it very smoothly because it's analog. So I got my regeneration up. I'm going to do the carbon copy. I'm going to get it going. And then I'm going to start messing with the delay time. And that's a very musical effect. And sometimes I just play a sequence of, of notes into a delay and sit and just play with the regeneration and delay time and create a piece out of that. Here's the same thing with the Wazacraft in the more modern setting. And they even give you an expression pedal input to change that knob via a foot controller. So now I'm going to use the DD8 delay and do the same thing. But you're going to notice it's not as smooth because instead of moving buckets faster or slower, I'm going to be tapping into different parts of the digital signal. And that can create a glitch, especially if you do it very quickly. But you can use that musically as well. And now the same thing on the Nemesis delay. one's actually pretty smooth for a digital. It's one of the things I really like about the Nemesis. So to recap on that, if you like that spaceship sound and you really like growing sounds and fading them out and bringing them back in at different pitches and doing what we call the spaceship sound, um, analog delays are just always going to be better until they perfect digital delay pedals. But they're certainly getting closer, as you can hear. So one of the things that's available on many delays is modulation. And that's either a button or some knobs that allow you to take an LFO and change the delay time, which makes the pitch go up and down, either slightly or a lot. If you mix that with the dry signal, you get what we call chorus. That's all a chorus pedal is. And on analog pedals, uh, you might be able to have a, a rate and maybe a depth. Uh, on digital pedals, you might be able to have a rate and a depth and a shape and maybe some other parameters as well. Uh, but this is what it sounds like on an analog pedal. This is the carbon copy, first without mod and then add mod and listen to the beautiful chorus. So it's definitely a desirable thing. Um, the Wazacraft does not have it, although I suppose you could, if you wanted to put a control voltage from an LFO into the expression, you could probably do it there. Now I'm going to use the DD8 digital pedal, and I'm going to set it to mod. Here, it's getting a nice sound as if you were having two oscillators. This only has one, so clearly all that modulation is coming from this pedal. There it is without. And now I do the same thing on the Nemesis. And I have two knobs always dedicated to mod depth and mod rate. But there's one extra feature that comes from digital pedals, not usually found in analog pedals, and that is stereo. So now I connect this both left and right, and all of a sudden we're going to get stereo modulation. No modulation.
and that's just a beautiful sound. Now I'm gonna go back to the DD8, now that we're in stereo, and you'll hear that it also does a nice stereo modulation. So, so far I've shown you all of the pedals doing analog, two of them really analog and two of them trying to emulate analog, but on the DD8 there are many other choices and there are 24 choices on the Nemesis delay above and beyond analog. So I'm going to show you the DD8 digital delay in its actual digital settings. So now you're going to get lots of nice top end. And notice as I go higher and higher, you're going to continue to hear those echoes. And that's probably less important to guitarists who don't have that much top end, but to keyboard players and horn players, um, it's a great thing to have uh, digital as well as analog emulation. And now here is the Nemesis in its digital mode. Turn on. And where this is particularly important is when you're doing things like filter sweeps, which I do all the time. And so here it is in digital mode with some modulation, full frequency response, um, lots of feedback, but now I'm gonna be sweeping resonance on the cutoff of the Moog. just a beautiful sound uh, that's hard to do in analog. And there's lots more things on digital, including different engines, sometimes the ability to move every single knob and parameter via MIDI or via control voltage or via expression pedal, um, just things that aren't always available in the delays. Um, both can sometimes have the ability to do different uh, units of the beat against tap, so quarter, dotted, eighth, triplet. Uh, the Carbon Copy Deluxe has that. Other ones you have to kind of do it in your head. Now on the digital pedals, you can also have control via MIDI over lots of parameters. Some parameters that you can't even get to from the front panel. You can also change different engine types. Um, you can also use expression pedal to do many things, sometimes many things at once in different directions, different amounts. Um, you can use control voltages from modular synthesizers. But I hope that this gives you a quick understanding of whether you might want an analog delay pedal or a digital delay pedal or both. I always have both because I love both of the things that are great about each. Um, if you have any further questions about these delay pedals or any of the equipment used in this, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like these or go to Sweetwater for all your musical instrument and pro audio needs.